this is an IndyCar. Hello everyone, I am Samuel Ryman and this is This Week in Lionheart. Wednesday night we ran round number 4 of the 2021 Lionheart IndyCar series at Watkins Glen where we had a clean race, which is more than what could be said from this AI race that I ran here once. Nine cars in total. We're smarter than computers, people. Here is your 30 second recap. The Sim Experience Grand Prix of Watkins Glen marked the fourth round of the 2021 Lionheart IndyCar series. For the first time this season, we got a repeat winner in 2021 as Sage Karam dominated the race. However, points leader Adam Blocker still remains a man to beat, having not finished worse than second all season. There was very little attrition, although the first point of controversy of the season arose after two cars overheated and blew up during the fixed setup race. Now one guy who did make it to the finish was the 20th place finisher, Ricky Hardin, but Ricky, it almost wasn't to be, because before we get into conversation, I want to uh, make note of a moment that happened on lap number three. <laughs> Do you want to talk us through that? Yeah, I, I actually was really surprised that the race spot broadcast caught that. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm deep enough that they're, they're not going to bother with, with seeing that but man I, uh, I I actually talked about it on my stream uh, when it happened but I got down into the corner underneath I don't remember who I was underneath but uh, I, I had a suboptimal entry obviously into that corner and uh, had a little bit too much wheel in it in the center and it already kind of started to break loose and I, I came back and boy it kicked out and I I am very lucky that I didn't get hit by the car behind me because he had, you know, no, no time to react and, and just barely caught it. And actually I had another moment two laps later and the broadcast caught that one too. Uh, just clipping the grass in the corner before that uh, coming through the, um, coming through the, the, after you come through the heel there or right as you're coming through the heel at Walgins Glen, it was uh it was, it was a hairy couple of laps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got through it. You ended up finishing 20th place. So you've started this season with a 15th and 18th, a 35th at Phoenix, but we don't have to talk about that if you don't want to, and a 20th. So you're 24th in the points. How do you rate how your season has gone so far? I mean, it, it, the first two races went as expected, and this race really went as expected too. I was shooting for a top 15 on all the ovals and then shooting for a top 20 on all the road courses. And if I can accomplish those goals, I feel pretty good about where we're at. And the Lionheart IndyCar Series is a super competitive series. It's very difficult to compete in. And I, I don't think it could be overstated how, how good a lot of these drivers are. So um, I don't consider myself a great road course racer. And I'm learning the, the IR18 um, week over week. And uh, I, I, think, I think we're going to play. So, I mean, obviously, Phoenix didn't go according to plan. We got, we, we, we got uh, into an accident where there wasn't really time to react and a spin happened in front and I got hit from behind and those things are going to happen. You're gonna have races like that. So, I mean, I can't be disappointed about it. Although, I mean, I'd love more. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone wants that one magical race to come. Don't they? I mean, hell, even, even I've got a third place finish in this series. And, and like you say, cause you've been around iRacing for a while. I, yeah. I met you in person at North Carolina a few, a few years ago. I think you were the first ever iRacer that I met in person. Um, but you're relatively new to the IndyCar series. And like you say, it, it, the, the talent in the field is stacked. I mean, just look at the fact that the race winner was Sage Karen, a, yes. a, guy, a guy who has a ride for the real world Indy 500. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, I've, I'm very experienced in sim racing. I've been around sim racing since 1999. I have done mostly stock car racing and mostly oval racing during that time. I've done a little bit of road course racing and I, I feel fairly proficient at it, but um, IndyCar wise, I, I did make a, an appearance in the Lionheart IndyCar series back in 2015, season three, but that was in the DW12. And I, the DW12 and the IR18 are very different. <laughs> and I, I don't, you know, if people aren't that familiar with the, the IndyCar, it's, it's, it's a big learning curve to jump from that one, well, six years ago, uh, into this one. Now, you mentioned your stream already, uh, Hard in the Wall. I think you've got uh, a few people who'd like to, to check that out. Would you like to give that channel a shout out right now? Yeah, absolutely. We're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Hard in the Wall. Uh, obviously, that's a, a play on my last name, Harden. And uh, the uh, the joke is that I'm in the wall quite a bit. So, uh, you know, I, I, a little bit of, uh, of self-deprecation is okay, <laughs> I think. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's only happened one time so far this season, though. So right. you're doing pretty good. <laughs> Almost happened the second time yep. at Watkins Glen. Uh, so, again, you're relatively new to IndyCar. The series is stacked. You're saying your goal at Watkins Glen was a top 15. You got the top 20. What are your goals for the season as a whole? And are, are there any races or, you know, um, moments that you really have your eyes set on? Well, all of, all of the Triple Crown moments are, are big, I think. And uh, wrote road courses are, are going to be that top 15 to top 20 area. I'm, I'm okay with that. If I can finish in the top 20, I know that I've done well. And if I finish in the top 15, man, that's like a win. So on, on the ovals, I, I definitely think that we have the opportunity to either strategy our way into a top five or a win, or even, even at some of the bigger tracks like a Pocono in Indianapolis, I think I can compete for the win. I just have to position myself correctly, but I know the speed's going to be there. It's not something I, I struggle with at the big tracks. Now that's uh, one good thing for me to hear because I'm on your team, a sim race and merch sports team. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. Yep. Uh, it, the full thing, my camera doesn't catch all things. Semi pro fake yeah. race car driver. Go to sim race and merch.com. <laughs> uh, that's the site ran by our teammate, James Krahula, who was in Tata, Watkins Glen. But Ricky, we're actually doing pretty good in the points. So I, I need to thank you for that. We're, we're fourth in the team standings right now. Uh, how, how did you get in contact with James about running the season and joining this team for this year? Well, obviously, James and I go a long way back. We've we've been friends for years and years. We we ran uh, we used to be on a team together, Steel Horse Racing, back in the uh, mid 2000s. I mean, like 2007, 2008, I think is when we became teammates there. And uh, several years we were, we were teammates there. So we met in person several times up in uh, Richmond. We went to some races at Richmond, uh, and Darlington. We went to races together. So, uh, we go a long way back. And then we also ran, uh, the premier racing league in 2015 through 2017. He and I, that was our brainchild. We, we kind of developed that and James did most of the day-to-day -day operations of it. And, uh, and I, I just helped with adminning and setting up all the spreadsheets and that kind of thing. And, that is, that's kind of our history. And so when I came into Lionheart, it was natural that I wanted to be associated with James's team and with what James is doing at Sim Racing merch. Uh, I think that's really cool. He's building an, an amazing brand and it's, it's, uh, it's really neat to be a part of. Our next race is at Kentucky. Um, I'm guessing you have a lot of experience with Kentucky through uh, the stock car racing. How, how are you feeling about it in the syndicate? Well, Kentucky's a track that I haven't really driven uh, much on iRacing at all. I, so since I had kids, 2015 is when I had kids, and I, I took a little bit of a step back from sim racing after that point. And I don't think Kentucky was around on iRacing before that. And if it, well, I, I want to say that maybe there's a new version of Kentucky. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know I have that. So I, I don't think I have a lot of experience there. And I've obviously never driven the IndyCar there. So it's to be seen. Uh, one of the great things about Lionheart is all the practice sessions that, that they you know, host throughout the week. Um, I will make sure I get lots of laps in and, and learn it and know what I'm doing by the time we get there, I hope. Well, I'll tell you on the personal account, I think I've done four races with Lionheart at Kentucky and I still don't know what the hell I'm doing there. So <laughs> well, That's not it, promising, thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe I need to pick your brain a little bit on in a couple of Wednesdays time. Well, Ricky, I feel our interview has been rather short here. So I'll give you one last chance to throw out any final thoughts on the season before we uh, let you go and rest up and get ready for round number five. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I've had a lot of fun jumping back into the IndyCar series and I got to thank George and Zaldo and, and the entire ad, admin team at Lionheart. It's, it's been really fun. The races have been really, really clean and competitive. And I, I think that's one of the biggest things about it. Watkins Glen, in an Indy car or any open wheel car, you really expect it to be kind of a mess at the start. And I know you did because you started for pit road. <laughs> yes. And that <laughs> and, almost worked out for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't for the, for the, you know, fuel saving that you yeah, had to it, do, it, I think you'd have been I, in great I shape. want to explain this to my viewers real quick. I pitted on lap eight knowing uh, I could get 14 laps on fuel and thinking, Oh, I'm going to finish a lap down. Uh, the problem was I finished on the lead lap. So <laughs> the strategy would have been perfect if I, if I had accounted for the fact that I was actually fast. You miscalculated. Yeah, yeah. You miscalculated yeah, yeah. how fast you were. Yeah. But, go, ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. But you, you know, looking at the incident count for this season and, and Lionheart, I think that's staggering. Just go to the stats and look at your, your incident count for the entire league. And it's, it's amazing how few incidents we've had this season. So I'm, I know George is proud of that. And he, he would, he wants everybody to, to see 
just how well these guys are doing and, and just how fast and competitive it is. I'm hoping one of these days we're going to drink it, unfortunately, but it's, it's good that it's lasted. <laughs> Maybe I just did. <laughs> well, thanks for coming to talk to us, Ricky. Uh, congrats on relatively solid start to the season. And uh, I know I'm looking forward to seeing you do well in Kentucky and uh, all of the fans will get to watch it in two weeks time. Yep. We're building, building, building. We're going to get there. <laughs> Thank you, Jen, Sam. Sam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, James, for having us on the team. And we'll yeah. see everyone around.